So gastrointestinal tract is affected in approximately 90% of people with scleroderma. Different parts are affected more commonly. The esophagus is the most common place. The figures on this chart all show a range. That's because studies differ in the way they measure involvement. In some cases, this will merely be on testing. In other cases, it's when symptoms are present. Sometimes these symptoms can be very severe and can lead to people losing weight. That's called malnutrition and people can go on to develop intestinal failure and need parental nutrition. We'll hear a little bit about that later on. The figure on this chart says that 1.9% of people need parental nutrition. That number is actually probably too high because when we look at these figures, these figures are gathered in by big tertiary centres. So by default, they tend to attract the sickest people. So we always see a, small, a slight skew in this data. So these problems are common. We've also looked at how they affect people. Studies have looked at patients' perceptions. Gastrointestinal problems are reported to be one of the most socially disruptive <coughs> physical symptoms. They can be associated with sleep disturbance and some, such as faecal incontinence, are reported to have a negative impact on quality of life. Mm. However, despite these problems being common and having a profound effect on people, there have actually been relatively few recent advances in their management. So we all have an esophagus. Our esophagus should contract in a coordinated fashion to repel food from our mouth and into our stomach. We call that movement peristalsis. At the end of our esophagus, entering into the stomach, we have a muscular junction called the lower esophageal sphincter. That should relax to allow the passage of food, then contract again to prevent things regurgitating back up. We all have acid in our stomachs. Acid in the stomach is normal. But when allowed to come back up, it can damage the delicate esophageal mucosa. We should have natural protection from this. We have a slivery bicarbonate buffer that neutralises the acid. We have peristalsis that clears the esophagus. And we have a tight juncture to stop things coming back. But in scleroderma, these can all go wrong. So we can see reduced saliva, altered motility in our esophagus, and a weak juncture. The stomachs can also be affected by motility issues, meaning they don't empty so quickly, so that when this juncture fails, there's more there to come back up. We also know that this involvement can get worse over time, so we can see symptoms deteriorating.